In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this fifth Sunday in Lent is from John, the 11th chapter. When Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, 
What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Ever since the fall of mankind into sin, people have resisted the word and the work of God. In fact, it goes back even farther than that, to the time when Satan, or Lucifer, first rebelled against God in heaven. And he was cast out of God's heavenly court. He is the one who is resistant to God's word and to God's work in the world. He knows his fate. He knows his punishment. He knows that his judgment is sure. So he will do whatever it takes to bring as many of us down with him as he can. And that's really what's going on at the end of this reading in John 11. After Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, John reports that many of the Jewish people believed in Jesus. They had seen the signs and the works that he performed, and they were putting their hope and their trust in him. But there were many who did not want to put their hope and their trust in Jesus. Many who saw him as a threat to their power, to their prestige, to their religion, and their way of life. These are the ones who said, what are we going to do about this Jesus guy? We've got to get rid of him because if he keeps going on like this, and keeps doing more and more of these amazing signs, more and more people are going to just keep going out to him and keep going after him. And it's not going to be very long before the Roman government takes notice. And they're going to come in here and wipe us out. They've done it before. We've seen it happen. What's to keep them from taking away our holy place? And our holy nation. Satan is hard at work trying to do everything he can to resist and to prevent the word and the work of God. And the result of those efforts is this. Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, the Christ, hanging dead on a cross. But the irony in this is that this, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, the Christ, hanging dead on the cross, is actually God's plan for the salvation of the whole world. John reports to us the words of the high priest Caiaphas, Words that he himself couldn't even possibly have begun to understand their significance and their true meaning when he said, It is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. At the very best, Caiaphas was hoping simply to make Jesus into a scapegoat, to let the Romans take all of their wrath out on him, so the rest of the people could go free. But this was not God's plan. God's plan was that by the death of his son on the cross, 
he would accomplish the redemption of the whole world. Jesus, on the cross, paid for all of our sins, won victory over death and the grave, and opened to us the kingdom of heaven and everlasting life. Indeed, by his death on the cross and his resurrection on Easter, Jesus has gathered all of God's scattered children into one, including you and me. In our world today, Satan is still hard at work. He will continue to do anything that he possibly can to prevent and to resist the word and the work of God. He does not want us to put our hope and our trust in Christ. He does not want anyone to put their hope and their trust in Christ. And oh, how powerful and how strong he is using even a virus at this time around the whole world to tear our eyes away from Christ, to cause fear and division, to prevent churches from being able to gather together around God's holy word and his sacraments so that you and I would not believe in Jesus or that we might despair of hope and give up. But what's happening right now? You are watching this message. You are hearing this reading from God's word online. God's word is not being stopped. God's word and his work are still going out into the world. They are still going out for you and to you. So that this death of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins, the life and the salvation that he, that he has won will still go out to you. His work is finished. He has accomplished everything needed for our salvation and nothing no matter what Satan may try to do, nothing can tear it away from us ever again. And so during this time of crisis, of anxiety and fear, during this lockdown, this shelter-in-place order in Minnesota, know that your God is still working in your life. Just as the Pharisees didn't succeed, in keeping Jesus from accomplishing his work, neither will our Heavenly Father allow Satan to succeed in keeping us from him forever. So, may this work of Christ and this word of God continue to work in your life, strengthen and keep you in the faith of Jesus through this virus situation, and beyond, to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace.